Hey everyone, Dave here, back in my garage, ready to pull some orders. And I have quite a bit to pull. It's been a busy weekend. I've been sourcing uh, pretty much all weekend. I have this theory, so generally, generally speaking, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm ruminating, as it were, sitting around just thinking. And generally, I am like always in a good mood. Almost always, like 80% of the time I'm in a good mood. Right now I'm like a little cranky. <laughs> and I'm trying to like put my finger on why, and I think it's because, this is my theory, tell me what you think. I think it's because I was sourcing for the last like two days straight. And when you're sourcing, it's like an adrenaline rush. Like, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting and you're finding things that are worth lots of money and then you, you like find something, you pay five bucks and it's worth a hundred. Like that sort of stuff is happening all day. And basically Friday and Saturday, I was at that 100 mile sale called Flea Across Florida. And on Friday, I found tons of great items. Uh, okay, so first off, I did want to say uh, this item that I was going to throw out, sold in the last one. I noticed a chip here when I was pulling it. So I messaged the buyer, asked if they still wanted it. Uh, they asked for a discount. I'm going to give them like a $10 discount on it. So really, I'll only get 15 for it instead of 25 uh, But they do still want it. So I will still send that out. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like uh, sitting in my house listing and pulling orders and shipping eBay just seems such a, like such a downer compared to being out sourcing and finding cool items. I think this struggle, I only tell you that because I feel like that might be something that you guys have had happen, something relatable where you're like down in the dumps. And I wonder if that's what it is, is that I'm addicted to sourcing. <laughs> I think that's very likely. This is kind of cool. This I bought because of a new passion to learn MCM. I saw these at a uh, community sale last week and it's six of these little like paint your own mushroom things. These are from like the seventies, I believe. Uh, and there's six of them. Some are partially painted, some are unpainted. Uh, what I liked about it was that like, you know, they weren't horribly painted. Like you could come in and you could finish this and it would look awesome. And the one that is finished does look awesome. So to me, that was like pretty cool. It's a project someone can do and uh, you know, really make something beautiful. Plus it's mushrooms, which are very uh, trendy right now. And so I grabbed that. I paid a dollar for that box at a yard sale and sold it for 35 plus shipping. And I believe that did go to a viewer, Noelle. She didn't put a message on the order, but I remember seeing a message come across from somebody named Noelle saying that uh, ADHD is their superpower, which is very cool. I think they are a viewer who put in that order. Pretty sure. So thank you, Noelle, if you're a viewer. But yeah, I'm just trying to get out of the slump. I've been listing since I woke up anyways. <laughs> uh, and the big struggle, I mean, this also could be partially it. The thing I've been listing is not a passion of mine. I've been listing jewelry pretty much all day or trying to list jewelry and man is it tough i don't really know enough about a jewelry to and i'm not talking about like not knowing you know all these intricate things i don't even know like the basics right so today i learned about something called a bib a bib necklace and learning that helped me find an item to comp but it took me like 25 minutes to figure out that it was called a bib and so most people who like sell jewelry all the time would have known that and instantly been able to find the comp and list the item. So the crazy thing is I paid so much for this jewelry, like unwise. It was, hmm, can I say it was a bad buy? Let me look at see how much I listed. It for sure is all very premium costume jewelry. And this is what the person who sold it to me said. It's very premium costume jewelry. And I looked through a couple of the bags and I see names I've heard of like Anne Klein and uh, Chico and things like that. And, uh, and there was another name that was like fancy, Alan Schwartz, right? So some good, good jewelry, I, I figured. And I will say the thing that inspired me is I try to be like a sponge when it comes to reselling and sourcing and learning new things. And when Brandon's wife was here, she was constantly looking through jewelry. So I would go up next to her and ask her what she's looking for. And she would tell me like the weight of the jewelry, the name of the jewelry. And so I was trying to kind of learn from Jen. And today I had this opportunity, or not today, this weekend I had this opportunity to buy some jewelry and I said, I'm going to go for it. But I got too like emotionally invested in the negotiation to the point where I overpaid. I paid more than I should have without a doubt. Uh, but I don't think I necessarily will lose money. Let me see. I've already listed quite a bit. The rest of it I set aside for whatnot because I can't easily find a comp. I basically listed the stuff I could find comps for. The rest of it, I just set into a bag. I'm gonna do a big jewelry auction. Maybe even do it today or or tomorrow. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. If I do it today, it, you already missed it. If I do it tomorrow, maybe I'll do it tomorrow night. Just, it's not a lot. It's probably like 30, 40 items of jewelry. That's like nice, nice custom jewelry uh, that I just don't know how to comp. So <laughs> what I learned is that I don't know much. Let me see, how much did I list? So I listed like almost $450 worth of jewelry out of the bag. The problem is, the problem is I paid 
$290 for some custom jewelry. Uh, this sold, it's a Palm Pilot little keyboard. This took a very long time to sell. This is not what I would call something I would recommend buying. It's a keyboard for a Palm Pilot. There's just not enough people using a Palm Pilot. But I think I got this at the bottom of some tote of other stuff I had bought, so it was basically free. And I ended up listing it, but yeah. It goes like that, and then the Palm Pilot goes on top. Uh, and I sold that over on eBay for $17.99 plus shipping. But yeah. $290 was too much. I should not have spent that much. And I'll tell you how she kind of like got me. She was a great negotiator. First of all, she was awesome. She was a hilarious lady. She was making me crack up the whole time. She was very sweet. So I'm not really upset that I bought it, but I realized how good of a salesperson she was as I was listing this stuff. So this is what sold. Fighting Karate. It's a book. $24.99. Sold that over on eBay. I think I paid one. What did I pay? Hmm five dollars for a stack of like 25 karate books a lot of them ended up listed on ebay i don't expect them to sell fast but that one right there 5x is my money and the other ones i think it was like 400 dollars, 500 dollars worth of karate books those will all be pure profit so happy to have gotten my money back for those so no like okay here's what happened she had these bags of jewelry right like bags each item was bagged and when i went up i picked up an item that looked really nice that i inclined and uh i said so all right maybe it was this one Right, these like gold balls. These are really like heavy, hardy. It's not like the normal jewelry I find. Like this stuff's heavy. It feels really nice quality. And she's like, oh, you don't even know what that's worth. She's like, that's $15 for that bag. And you know, I asked like two or three more and she said, oh, 15, 15. So like each bag was 15, but I could see the quality. I like when looking through, I'm seeing brand names that I've heard of, things like that. All those to me were like positive signs of, hey, Dave, this is your chance to do a jewelry buy and see if you can like learn some jewelry. Cause I always want to learn new categories. I think it's fun and it keeps it exciting. And so I asked her how much for the whole table. And she just like, she was a very good negotiator. Cause she's like, well, add them all up, multiply them times 15. <laughs> You know, and she's like, tell me how much it would have been. And and I don't know, like this sold as an onion maker as seen on TV. These have gone down in the last couple of years. I used to sell them for like 30 to 35. I don't even pick them up anymore. I sold it for 20 plus ship. Most people want five bucks for them. I'm pretty sure I paid five bucks for that one. So I try not to buy them anymore because five into 20. But then, you know, it sold five bucks into 20. It is a profit. But I was like, the problem was I should have spent a little extra time. This is, this is my... Hindsight's 2020, right? And yes, I'm thinking all into this buy, which is already over. But I should have spent a little extra time and been like, I said something like this. It's like a little bracelet and there's no maker mark or anything on it. I should have asked her how much something small like that was gonna be like, was it also 15? Cause I realized when I was listing that everything I asked her about was like the fanciest looking big like necklaces and stuff. But for example, I didn't ask her how much this brooch was. This is a brooch, it's not branded, it's really pretty. Lots of cool gemstones on it. Um, I don't know the name of it. And I don't even know, maybe it's worth 30, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but in, I feel like if I had asked her that, she would have said, oh, the brooches are 10, or the brooches are five, or something like that. But because the first three items I bought were all 15, and then I said buy it all, she just assigned this $15 per item price, which I, I had already established when I first walked up. She had said everything's a different price. So I don't feel like those brooches were really gonna be 15 if I had bought them individually. In the past, it's done, it's a done deal. I just wish that I had thought a little bit more clearly and not gotten blinded by my excitement of a new category, which I think is what really happened there. Uh, but in the end, if I've already listed over 450, I'm already in the profit and uh, I think I've got some really good stuff left. I really do. So I, I could, I'm going to do a show, a whatnot show in the jewelry category and get some of the jewelry collectors in there. And I know there's a lot of jewelry collectors on whatnot, and I'm hoping that they come in and they bid on it. I mean, I kind of, I think with my negotiation, I feel like my buy price was somewhere around $8, you know, after the talking her down and stuff. So I think I could still do okay on whatnot. Anyways, Sony, another one of these Blu-ray players sold for uh, $17.79 plus shipping over on eBay. I actually think I got a complaint about one of them that I need to go look at. I, I mean, I think one might be coming back. I don't know for sure, but I think one might be coming back. I also saw in Mercaria had a return coming back. So there's the Mercaria return thing coming into play that we were all very scared about. It was a Moana, very big Moana action figure. I need to figure out how to find out, figure out how to find out why they're returning it. Maybe I can do that now uh, because supposedly they can only return it within the first 72 hours, which they did if it's not as described. So I feel like, what am I going to steal? They must have said it wasn't as described. Let's see if we can figure out what they did here. 
Yeah, it doesn't say. It just says Moana figure is on its way back to you. The buyer will not be refunded until the item is returned. But how do I see why they returned it? I had sold it for $17. Well, anyways, that's coming back regardless. So not the end of the world. And supposedly uh, Mercari will pay for that return label, which is good. So because I use Mercari shipping, they pay for the return label. So really, I'm not out much. I just relist it and sell it again. I would love to figure out why they're... Anyways, we won't talk about that. We'll talk about this train that sold over on eBay. This is a Lionel. Got this at the flea market. Paid five bucks for it. And we sold it over on eBay for $53.99 plus shipping for this old Lionel. Pretty nice, cool train. The guy was basically giving away his train stuff at the flea market. He's like, ah, I don't want it. Just take it. Five bucks, five bucks, one buck, one buck. I think I sold something else from him too. So that, that was some great deals. I got this sale that I'm so excited about. I, I don't know why I'm so excited about it. I think I, I do know because I think the the repercussions could be huge in a positive way for sellers. I think that this new thing, this new exciting thing <laughs> could be a very big deal for people like you and I and just everyone who watches this, right? There's, oh, I got an offer, hold on. See, how do I? Anyways, I hope, I hope I don't get in trouble for talking about this because technically it's not supposed to be announced till tomorrow, but I can't wait. I got to talk about it t today and I'll message uh, Vendu and see if they tell me I can't do it. Uh, I guess hopefully they'll be okay with it though, because I think it's, this is a perfect moment to talk about it. So let's talk about it. Now, where did I put this? Okay. So, so here's what happened. I got a sale. I sold something. Okay. That's what I do here. I sell stuff. I sold something on whatnot, but it's not like a normal whatnot sale. It was a buy it now off my marketplace, which is rare, right? Very few people that I know have ever even gotten an offer off their marketplace just sitting there. Well, I actually got a sale off my marketplace on whatnot, which was very exciting to me. And the reason it's exciting to me is because the way I listed it, the way I listed it was I used Vendu. So Vendu has just released. Well, it's a beta. It was a beta for me for like the last four days. And I've been testing it out. The ability to cross list to whatnot from eBay or Mercari or anything like that, like literally to the marketplace. And I, you know, when I first heard, I'm like, well, does it matter? Like, do people buy things from the buy it now on whatnot? Well, guess what, guys? They do. <laughs> they do. I can assuredly say unto thee, that they do exactly that. They buy from the marketplace on whatnot because I sold something. And not only did I sell something, I also just, that's what got this, what distracted me. I just got an offer as well on whatnot for one of my buy it now baskets, one of my longer burger baskets. I just got a best offer of a decent best offer, like $33 on a $39 item. All right, I found it. Took me a second. Uh, so yeah, Vinylmation. It's a big lot of Vinylmation figures, loose ones. It was, I don't even know, 20 figures or something like that. Four bags full of vinyl mission figures. I listed them on eBay. A few days, few days later, went and cross listed them over on whatnot, $60, and it sold. Buy it now. Sold from cross listing with Vendu to whatnot. I'm really excited about this whole concept. And the other cool thing, which kind of is mind blowing, is it's literally one button. You just press one button and it cross lists to whatnot from Mercari or from eBay in Vendu. I'll, I'll actually show, I'm gonna show you this because it's that crazy. All right, so check this out. This is pretty wild. So you go to Fenton, this Fenton thingy, you click down on whatnot, which is in beta, go down, list on whatnot. It's done. That's it, like see listing, done. And it now shows up on my whatnot marketplace. Like it's that easy. And so why, the reason I think this is exciting is because it means that like those people, which a lot of you who don't wanna run a live auction now have like a legitimate new place to sell stuff where I think it'll actually sell. Like you gotta get approved to sell and whatnot, which I don't know. I need to message whatnot and see if they care if you don't plan on doing lives and you just wanna do like buy it now posts. But I think if they'll let you, I, mean, I should talk to them and see if like they can make an exception and let all my viewers just join to do buy it nows instead of auctions if they don't wanna do auctions because I think buy it now is gonna become a real thing on whatnot. And of course, dibbed it. Kevin says I have to say dibbedit.com as well. That's also a thing. But uh, the fact that Vendu can now cross list over to whatnot in literally one button and I'm actually getting sales and offers within the first three days is really exciting to me. Yeah, so that's, I was excited about that. I want to talk to you about that. Uh, I have a link for Vendu, save you 25% off your first month down below. It already paid for itself. Look, I think they have multiple plans. Like one of the plans I think is 20, one's $30, one's 40. It depends on how many items you want to list. But let's say you paid the $30 plan. 
I just paid for two months of it with that whatnot sale. If I had put that, I'll be honest, if I had put that in a live auction on whatnot and just said, oh, I'm running all these vinyl mations, I don't think I would have gotten $60. I think I would have gotten 30, probably around 30. Uh, so I'm excited about it. I think it's cool. Try out Vendu, link down below. Maybe sign up for Whatnot. If you want to use my link to try to sign up for Whatnot Selling too, if you're not already, I know a lot of you already are, uh, then click my link down below and sign up to be a seller as well. But I just think that's that's such a cool thing that they have cross-listing now on Vendu. No other platform's doing that. No other platform's letting you cross-list to Whatnot with them. Vendu's the only one. They're always ahead of the game. And they also have, oh, the other cool thing. Hold on, I'm almost done with this because I'm, I'm very excited. So it's hard not to talk about something I'm excited about. The minute it sold on whatnot, I went and checked my eBay. It was already delisted. I went and checked my Mercari, already delisted. So it auto delist from whatnot too. So if something sells on whatnot, it'll delist on eBay. Here's the cool thing. Think about this. Something you can do if you do like to do auctions on whatnot is you can take a listing in your marketplace and hit add to auction. So I could literally, once I get everything cross-listed, I could say, you know what? I really wanna clear out the shelf of lighthouses. And I can just type into lighthouse and whatnot and just convert all to auction and just run a lighthouse auction with all my eBay listings. Now, I don't know for sure if I sell them on auction, if it'll delist on eBay, that would be awesome. But I'm not sure yet. We'll see. I'll have to ask Vendu about that. Anyway, sold this uh, book, Robert McCammon. Brandon bought a big box of these. So I saw these at a yard sale. I said, oh, those are cool. There might be some profit in there. So I pointed them out to Jen and Brandon. And the reason for that was I didn't want to look them up. I didn't want to figure it out. I didn't want to buy books. But I also, and I, Brandon had been like not finding much. And I was trying to help him find something. So I said, hey, go check that out. He looks it up. And he's like, oh, yeah, these are really good. He gets back to my house and he's like looking them up. And he's like, oh, I don't think they're actually really good. I, and I was like, well, huh? They're probably worth something. Bring them home, whatever. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I don't even want them, Dave. You can just keep the books. Maybe you can find some that have value, things like that. And I did. I did. Actually, quite a few had value. There was a handful. My only thought is he looked up the ones that weren't worth much. Like, there was like five or six that weren't great. He must have just, like, been unlucky enough to only be comping the ones that weren't worth much. Because a lot of them were worth 20 bucks plus. And this one sold for $27.99 plus shipping over on eBay. So, you know, don't give up so quick. I did I did tell him, I told him he was a very good picker and that he did a good job. He was excited, I think, that uh, I sold one of them. So anyways, all right, I sold this. This is like a, a slot car remote control and like power thing, power brick. These are the sorts of things that I like to buy a lot because people don't see the value in them. Sold it for $15 plus shipping. This weekend it happened too. I was at a, a sale and a guy had a whole tote full of like adapters and AV power supplies for train sets. And those also do decent. Like most of them are worth 15 plus, which, you know, I like to sell things that are 15 or more. And they're like a necessity. Like you don't want to buy a power cord, but you end up needing one because you want to use your train, <laughs> you know? So there's something that does sell. It sells moderately quickly. Most people leave them behind and most people undervalue them. So I, I got a whole box. I think I gave him 10 bucks for a box full of them. And I'm sure... There'll be several in there that are worth $15 plus shipping and I'll make my profit pretty quick. But that's a good example of that sort of thing selling. And it sold hmm, about a month and a half took to sell. Anyways, continuing on with sales. I mean, do we have enough time? I have a lot of sales today. It's because I was doing that 100 mile yard sale. So I sold this puzzle over on eBay and the same buyer, actually, let me put these mushroom things away. So I don't break them. The same buyer did buy a car as well. Uh, so let me tell you my weekend, just so you understand, I might be a little tired. I'll be honest. I might be a little tired. And the reason is Friday morning, I woke up at like 4 a.m. This little Studebaker, Harley Motors, Har Harley Motors, Harley Davidson Motorcycles, 1916 Studebaker Limited Edition Bank in the box. Uh, I comped that wrong in a sale. It wasn't worth as much as I thought, but someone came in and bought both of them. They spent $14.99 on the Studebaker and $22.99 on the puzzle so that was a good puzzle uh you know what it was i thought that that car was worth like 50 when i comped it and that's what i mean so 15 is still fine but i thought it was 50 and it was really 15 so that's a cute puzzle hotman brothers collection is the name of it anyway so i woke up at 4 a.m on friday and i get you know showered up ready get in the car drive over to i think lake city florida which is about a two hour drive to meet up with rod picking and punching and do the 100 mile yard sale him and i we do the sourcing shopping we're going up the highway and you know sourcing can be exhausting i'm sure all of you guys who do sourcing on a regular basis totally get that it can be very exhausting sourcing getting in and out of your car buying stuff you've got all that adrenaline from finding something or from not finding things you know how it is, right? It can be very exhausting. So we do that and right at around, hmm, what time? 12.45, meaning I was sourcing from like 7 a.m. till around 12.45. 
AM, PM, PM, yeah, PM comes after AM. Can I get this? Oh no, don't drop it. That bin's a little too full of Christmas ornaments now. This is what's sold. It's like a Lamax little spooky gates and fence kind of thing for Halloween. It's five accessories for Spooky Town Lamax. Anyways, we do sourcing until like 12.30, 12.45. And then I have to leave because Anna has states for gymnastics. There we go. There it is. Uh, that sold for $13.49 plus shipping. And I think I think it was in her free pile, but I might have paid a dollar for it. It wasn't much. But Anna has states. So we go to the gymna I, the gymnastics meet was in Gainesville, I believe. So I drove down to Gainesville from Lake City, which was about an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes to get to her gymnastics meet. And I was cutting it pretty close, I'll be honest. So I was kind of rushing to get there. But I did get there in time. She does her whole gymnastics meet, which, you know, has fun and less fun parts, right? Like the, the actual doing of the gymnastics. That's always fun to watch. The award ceremony is very long. It's like an hour and that's a little less fun to watch. But we did that. I finished that up at 6.30. This sold. This I got at the flea market recently. This is a Mercury Vessel View Mobile. <laughs> this sort of thing that I buy. I love it. Uh, this is some sort of like get connected. It brings the power of smart craft to your mobile device. It somehow lets you use your smartphone in your boat. That's what this is. And it's brand new sealed. Sold that for $219.99 plus shipping, got that at the flea market. The guy had a boat part <laughs> and I was looking at his other stuff and I saw that he had some sealed boxes uh, that looked like they were shipping boxes, right? Like from Amazon or something. Like a lot of people, they'll get some on Amazon, they'll never even open it, they'll never return it. Uh, and then they'll just offload it at the flea market or at their yard sale, right? You've, you've all found that sort of thing before. This was one of those where he got that. He ended up getting it. We talked about it in the last video, I think. He got it for free because his first shipment got lost. Then that showed up and he called the company and they said he could just keep it. Well, anyways, he sold it to me for, I think, $50. And again, we sold it for $219.99 in a few days. So that was a good flip for me. Happy to do $50 to $220. Anyway, so oh, where did I put that ham radio thing? Could be over there. Uh, so I do the gymnastics meet. Then I have to drive to Tallahassee because Rod and Mike are going to continue the 100 mile sale. Rod being picking and punching and Mike being death pile picker are going to continue the 100 mile yard sale the next day because it goes Saturday as well in Tallahassee. Now Tallahassee was about two and a half hours from where I was. So needless to say, Friday, that was all Friday, literally two hours to the thing pick all day driving multiple cities getting in and out of the car going to the gymnastics meet an hour and a half away then going two and a half hours away again just to get to a hotel so we can do the yard sales the next day as well uh, I think I got there at like 9 30 or something 9 9 30 and uh, I was exhausted for sure this sold this is a CB radio breaker breaker one nine CB radio radio from Cobra 1334 plus shipping I had it listed at $14.99, took a best offer. That came with all my CB radios I got at the flea market. I really need to find that footage. I haven't edited it yet, and I'm having a total brain fart. I think I paid, <laughs> it's crazy, for all the CB radios anywhere from like $150 to $225. It might have been as high as $225, honestly, but I can't recall. And it's driving me bonkers, but that sold. And I've already sold like all the other CB radios I got except for two, and one of them's in our pull list today, and it's the best one, so... Hold on for that. You'll be excited to see what that sold for. CB radios can be really good. A lot of times they're broken though. So I did get to test these ones and they were not broken because one of the ones I got included the car adapter, which I kept so that in the future, I can always test them with the car adapter because I kept the car adapter. Might even be worth buying a car adapter if you bet, if you get a lot of those. They're only like 10 bucks. But yeah, then yesterday, this is like some Halloween edition of heavy metal. Uh, it's like a horror comic and it sold for $27.99 over on eBay plus shipping. Actually, $24.91 because it was a best offer uh, plus shipping on eBay. Yeah, so then the next morning we got up again at like 5 a.m., 5, 10 a.m., 4.50? I think it was 4.50 a.m. we got up that next day, and we sourced all day in Tallahassee, and me and Mike for sure, I think we went till 3 o'clock. Grad left at like 1. We went to like 3 o'clock, literally sourcing till 3 o'clock, and then I had to drive home and that was two and a half hours to get home. So I got home more like three hours because I had to stop and get a coffee because I was falling asleep behind the wheel. So I got home at like 6.30 last night. And uh, yeah, so this is why I'm a little tired. <laughs> That's why I'm a little bit tired, but I did get a lot of good items. Had a lot of fun. I would definitely do it again. This is what's sold right here. This is from Monster High. It's a little crow with a little skull that she sits on. And that sold for $15 plus shipping. It sold in a day. Might have listed a little, little might, might have listed it a little bit too low, but yeah, Monster High stuff can be really good. It's funny because I was at a sale with Brandon and Jen, 
and she had some dolls that weren't very good some barbies i said do you have any monster high she's like well i'm not i'm not selling my monster high and i said okay well if you have anything monster high i'd take it she's like well i've got accessories and i said yeah i'll take accessories that was in the accessories bag i think i paid two three bucks for the bag of accessories and i think i got like two more listings out of it for a grand total of around fifty dollars just in monster high accessories from like a two dollar bag so that was pretty cool all that to say i had a busy weekend but a fun weekend and now i'm just like coming down off the the high and the excitement of the weekend and just getting ready to pull the orders this morning i've been listing jewelry like i said then i listed some golf clubs because i just wanted to list something i like listing a little more so i did list some golf clubs this sold this is an ornament from dillard's it's we talked about this last time cleo stone chloe stone it's like some sort of metal i'll show you i've now sold two of these types of things in the last couple of days uh but they're like metal very cool little stocking Sold that for $23.39 just for one ornament. So that's pretty cool. Also, I found something so cool. I say cool. How many times? We should get a cool counter. How many times did Dave say cool in this video? So these chairs. I saw these chairs. Uh, I'm going to sit. Let me see. I haven't sat in it yet. Oh, yeah. They work for sitting. Nice. So I saw these at a sale, at the highway sale with Rod. Uh, everyone, their prices were crazy cheap on everything. But they didn't have that many great items. But as I was leaving, I saw next to their camper this chair set up. This is a folding chair, but it's like clear. And they had four of them. Like It was basically stacked exactly like I have it stacked. One chair, then a bunch like on the ground in pieces, right? But I saw that chair and I instantly, instantly like fell in love with it. It's so cool. It's like a clear acrylic folding chair. It's way more comfortable than a metal one. And I was like, oh, I need to have those. Those are awesome. And Rod's like, are those... Those might be good. I was like, I don't even know if they're good, right? I just love them. Like, if the price is as good as everything else here, I'll just keep them. And, uh, because I like them. The lady gave me the price of uh, $20 for four, five a piece. I asked her if she'd do 15 for four. She said, no problem. And so I got all four of those chairs for 15 And then I told her out as I'm leaving, I'm like, I don't think they're probably worth anything, but I really love them. And, you know, I, I guess I'll sell them if they're worth a lot, but I'm probably going to keep them. And then I look them up on the way to the next sale, and of course, they are worth a lot. They're like worth 60 to to $100 a piece for those folding chairs. 60 to to $100 a piece. Meaning, if I get the 100 a piece, like I just found a sold comp $200 for two of them plus shipping. That's 100 a piece. That means it's 15 into 400 on some chairs just because I thought they were cool. That's the kind of like excitement and high that really like gives you the adrenaline rush at a sale. Anyways, this sold. This is a Squishmallow. I got this at the thrift store, actually. Every now and then I go to the thrift store. You can put your arms through it. It's a hugamel, I think. A hugmallow? Hug, something like that. It is a hugmallow. Hugmallow. Because you can hug it and snuggle it and whatever, whatever. Uh, I paid a couple bucks for it. I think three or four bucks at the Goodwill. Sold it for $17.79. Not the greatest flip, but at least it sold fast. And that's, you know, kind of rare with plush. Most plush take a long time to sell. So, all in all, it was a fine flip. I sold these. These are Transformers. Again, like I said, I've been listing a little bit more like lots of toys on eBay. And so these are little Transformer, a little Transformer lot I listed. It's six Transformers. Oh, extreme close-up. Hold on, I'll tell you what they're called. Oh, I also found some Vaseline glass, uranium glass that I could actually afford for the first time in forever. Like literally ever, I think. They're Transformers Alt Modes. I guess they're called Alt Modes because they quickly transform into a car. I don't know. They're easy to transform, which I like. Like I'm already like halfway done. Anyways, it's a lot of seven of those sold for $32 over on eBay. So these are a little bit of a bolo. You see how it's like got a little car at the bottom and then you can tuck that car away and turn it into legs like on this one. That's the alt modes, $32, $31 and 13 cents, 14 cents for seven. Okay, so let's get to the uh, CB radio. So I did sell CB radio and this one, when I bought the CB radios, I knew this one was going to pay for all. And it certainly did. It's called the Galaxy. Yes, yeah, see, I have one left. I have one CB radio left after this one. It's called the Galaxy DX47HP. Uh, and this one sold for a lot of money. Let me see. I'll tell you how much. It was a lot, though. $283.91 for that CB radio. Like I said, worst case, can't remember, but eventually I'll edit the footage. Worst case, I paid $225 for all the CBs. And I've already brought in, I think, like, oh my gosh. I looked, I took the screenshots the other day, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'd already sold $310 worth, plus this $283. So I'm already $600 from $200, I think. And then I've got one more listed for $80. So 
you know, triple, a little more than triple your money, but I did it quick, which I think is the important part. Let me go grab this next item from Elijah's room because it's one of his sales. Okay, so I found it. This is, uh, I think, wait, what's his name? His name is Lefty. Big giant plush. Bought this from Commonwealth Picker, actually, right out of his shed for, I think, 50 or 40 bucks with the tag. He got it at that big sale where he got all the Five Nights at Freddy's stuff uh, out on a tarp. Uh, I bought it at, basically as a gift for my son. I gave it to my son a while back, like six, eight months ago. He decided to sell it. He loved it, but he decided to sell it. You know how things are. They they come and they go. He listed it for 50 and I was like stubborn, and I sneakily went in there and increased the price. <laughs> like, because he was like, my son gets to this like area where he's like really desperate for money. Like he wants money because he has this like hyper fixation on some new item or game or whatever that he wants. And so he'll be like, oh, I just need to make money. So he'll sell stuff for super cheap. And when I saw him listed for 50 I just kind of snuck into eBay and I just bumped it up to 90 because I knew it was worth more than that if if we're patient and uh anyways eventually got a best offer yesterday or two days ago for eighty dollars and 99 cents so i earned him an extra 30 bucks it did take longer it would have sold in a day or two at 50 but he found another way to make the money and now he gets 30 extra dollars so and he's not mad i asked him he's like no that's, that made sense he's like i saw you lift the price um and i wasn't upset about it so <sighs> anyways so that's sold lefty who knew a plush for 90 guys 90 dollar plush we got some good sales today. $200 boat thing, $200 CB, almost $300 on that one, and $100 plush almost. We're rounding up. Oh, $100 plush. <sighs> Maybe I'll talk about this on the podcast. There's something on that like $100 item on Mercari where people are complaining about the fees, but I'm going to probably talk about it on the podcast. Subscribe to Trash to Cash podcast. It's, uh, it's a fun podcast. Not super serious, but it's got reselling content. The way I look at Trash to Cash is like reselling is lonely. And it's a good way to hang out with another couple of resellers because it feels like we're just hanging out. Uh, anyways, this is a Godzilla. I got it at the flea market as well. Look at these flea markets. Paid 15 for this, paid up a little bit, but I knew it was good. He had another one, but it was missing the tail. I told him, I said, hey, if you get the tail, I'll come back and buy it. He must have found the tail because I went back a little bit later and it had already sold. So I only got one of them. $49.99 over on eBay. And again, paid 15 Just went and saw that video or that movie with my girls this weekend. Wait, when did I do that? <laughs> Thursday. That's right. We talked about it. I said, oh, I'm recording. Maybe I'll go see a movie with the girls today. And I did. I went and saw Godzilla versus Kong versus Mothra. I don't know. The story was a little weak, but it was fun. It was a spectacle. Lots of crazy stuff happening and lots of crazy action. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was somewhere in the middle. Uh, okay, so I sold a kitty. It's a little a little bit hard to pull the orders like this. This little opalescent uh, Fenton kitty sold. Got the Fenton hand signed on the bottom. I tell you, we went to my mom's house and she has a, like a little curio cabinet in her house full of these. And I didn't even know they were Fenton because like I knew there was Fenton cats, but I never really like processed what they looked like until I went and found these at that estate sale in my recent picker video. This one sold for $40 plus shipping on eBay. But it was funny. I went over to my mom's house the other day and I looked and I saw her curio cabinet and I noticed that in it is all these Fenton animals, cats, birds, squirrels. All the Fenton stuff is hiding in her curio cabinet. I never even realized it. And I said, Mom, you know, those are actually pretty valuable. She's like, oh, really? They were your, your grandmother's. They're like my dad's mom. They were my dad's mom's. And she's like, your dad likes them. So we put them up in here. I'm like, yeah, those are actually pretty valuable. <laughs> she, she called my dad instantly. She's like, should we sell them? And he's like, no, I like them, Sheree. <laughs> you know, my mom. mom. Mom's a flipper at heart, really. My dad, not so much. My dad is, uh, what's the opposite of flipper? Light hoarding it would be how I'd describe my dad. But that's all right. Oh, okay. This is going to fall on me. All right, this old, this is a Cars Pierre. No, Francisco little remote control thingy brand new in the box got this at the flea market too i can't remember what i paid maybe five bucks three to five bucks sold that over on ebay 17.79 plus shipping we pulled our whatnot sale i have this offer on whatnot for a longer burger basket i want to accept it but i can't figure out how total we we did sell something on mercari and on ebay too guys we're not done yet i know you're like dave end the video but I can't until I pull the rest of my orders. I got to ship all this stuff too. Uh, okay, $1,365 in sales over on eBay this weekend. Now let's look at Mercari. I hear someone crying. I think it's one of the kids next door. Oh, dang. Someone is asking me all these like detailed questions about the polar bear. Remember the polar bear that I didn't photograph late, right? And the lady's all mad at me because she designed it and she said I'm not treating it properly. Well, someone is really interested in it. So... As soon as I'm done recording this, or maybe as I'm recording this so I don't forget because I've been thinking it for two days that I need to deal with it and I have not dealt with it yet, uh, I should just go ahead and answer her questions. 
because I would love to sell that. It's taking up a lot of room and I want it gone. Sold an artisanal bear. I might need to put down my uh, camera to pull it though. Stand by. A scythe. I sold a scythe. Okay, so I sold this scythe bear. Gosh, I just noticed my camera wasn't recording. I wonder how long it's been not recording. Sold this scythe bear over on Mercari for $70 plus shipping. One of my little artisanal bears. Uh, still with the tag on that one. That is my only sale over on Mercari, but I know I have a Poshmark sale as well. Cross listing, guys. Power of Vendu. The power of Vendu compels you. I sold a plushie or two over on... Oh, where did I put these? Oh, I did put them over here. Okay, uh, on Poshmark. It was a set of two plushy long burger thingies. Let me see. Oh, I got positive feedback on my tramp lamp. <laughs> tramp art lamp, which is good because I was a little concerned about that. It was hard to ship. Uh, okay, so which ones are they? I don't really want to find these right now. I'll find them later. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you what's sold here. These two Longa Burger Horizon of Hope Boyd's Bears. They came with my big basket buy I did recently with Jen. Sold those for twenty bucks plus shipping over on Poshmark, and I think they're just at the bottom of a plush bin, and I don't feel like digging through it right now. <laughs> Uh, is that bad? So yeah, just not much on those platforms. Really, my best alternate platform today was Mercari, followed by Whatnot. Maybe Whatnot, if Whatnot, if that order goes through where they sent me a best offer. All right, anyways, it was actually a really good sales weekend. A lot of good sourcing happened uh, this week coming up. I'll, like I said, I'll do that jewelry auction, see how that goes. I will update you on how I do with that, see if some jewelry people come in there. Hopefully, I won't get in trouble from Vendu for slipping this news a day early. It's technically coming out tomorrow, the Whatnot integration, but... Sorry. <laughs> I should have shown... I, how, else would I, how else could I explain my sale if I didn't tell you? Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you did. Bye-bye.